All right, guys, welcome to episode 74 of the Unofficial and Clicks podcast. My name is Katie Kleber, and I am your host. And this title of this episode is Utilize Appropriate Precautions for Immunocompromised Patients. So what does this look like? And why does it matter? So you want to utilize appropriate precautions for patients that have um, their immune system compromised, meaning if they are exposed to a bacteria or a virus that normally um, they would be, their body would be able to handle, but because their immune system is compromised right now, they can't, and it could be a much bigger deal for them. You know, the first patients that come to mind are patients that are on chemotherapy. Um, you also can have immunocompromised patients um, are, you know, maybe they have, um, they're getting a ton of steroids and those kinds of things. But the most, most of the time what people think of are patients that are um, on chemotherapy or have um, neutropenia. So this varies de- depending upon the facility. A lot of times, you know, no fresh flowers or fruit. And if the visitors are ill, they are not permitted to be, um, see the patient. But many people institute or order something called reverse isolation. So basically that means um, the patient is on, you you use contact precautions, but it's not to protect the other patients from getting infected from something this patient has. It's from preventing us bringing something in to, um, that the patient can't, their immune system can't handle. And I actually have done this many times. However, when I looked this up, per the CDC, it is not found to improve outcomes for neutropenic patients to provide reverse isolation. And isolation is a negative experience is, is a negative experience for patients. And therefore, this classification of isolation precautions was removed from the CDC guidelines in the 1980s, which kind of blew my mind. So I actually put in our PDF, our massive PDF on page, what page is this? There's so many pages, guys. I'm on page 26. Um, I put a link to um, a blog post article called Debunking Reverse Isolation um, from nursecode.com. Totally encourage you to look at it. It's, it's not very long at all, but it, it explains this. And I thought this was very, very interesting. I also put a link to the CDC guideline for isolation precautions. And sure enough, negative or reverse, I'm sorry, reverse isolation was not on there, nor was neutropenic precautions, and which is what people kind of associate with. And I thought that was very interesting, too, that the N, the, the NCLEX kind of test plan doesn't say utilize appropriate reverse isolation precautions. It says utilize appropriate precautions for immu, 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 immunocompromised patients. So I thought that was really interesting. They didn't actually say reverse isolation. And then it's like, oh, there actually isn't evidence to support reverse isolation. It's probably just something that we've always done and people feel better about doing. But then, you know, big picture wise, that if it doesn't improve outcomes and it actually provides a negative experience for the patient, then why are we doing it? Wasting our time and our money and, and honestly giving the patient a negative experience for no reason. So I thought that was really, really, really interesting. So I want to encourage you to check that out. Um, and this really depends on the facility, uh, uh, whatever the appropriate precautions are. But again, I put the typical ones of no fresh fruit or flowers and, and ill visitors are not permitted. Um, so this could look different for different facilities, but I think it's important for you for the NCLEX to know if a patient is immunocompromised, you know, it's important to to be aware of that and be aware of the fact that, hey, you know, if they got something, it would be much more detrimental for them than it would be for someone else who maybe they're here for a broken leg and they're not, you know, here for, you know, their seventh round of chemotherapy, you know, so keep that in mind. Take a look at those um, links I put up, which are very, very interesting. And thank you guys. This is episode 74. Again, the title of this point and episode is Utilize Appropriate Precautions for Immunocompromised Patients. This has been another episode of the unofficial NCLEX Prep Podcast. To get the massive PDF guide that goes along with this podcast, head over to nrsng.com slash NCLEX Prep. That's nrsng.com slash NCLEX Prep. That's a free download that you can take with you anywhere, and you can basically have this podcast in text format. Our goal here at nrsng.com is to give you the tools and the confidence that you need to succeed in nursing school, on the NCLEX, 
and in your life as a nurse. We want you to succeed and we want you to become part of this movement of nurses that is dedicated and motivated to learning and becoming the best nurse that they can possibly be. My name is John Haas, RNCCRN, and I'm the founder of NRSNG.com, and I sincerely thank you for being here, and I'm so proud of you for taking this step in your journey. Now you know what time it is now. It's time to go out and be your best self today. Happy nursing.